Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Melinda Wamin Chita. I would like to begin with a powerful prayer of uh, inspiration by Samantha Bhadra Bodhisattva, who all that appears and exists, samsara and nirvana, has one ground, two parts, and two forms of fruition. The magical displays of awareness and unawareness. Through this Samantha Bhadra's prayer of aspiration, we all attain complete and perfect awakening. Within the palace of Dharma Dhatu, the absolute sphere, the basis of everything is uncompounded, a self-originating expanse, vast and inexpressible, beyond the names Sansara and Nirvana. This itself, when seen, is awakening. But in their ignorance, beings wander in samsara. May all sentient beings throughout the three realms realize the meaning of the ineffable ground. I, Samantra Bhadra, know the ground's reality, which is without cause or condition. It originates by itself within this very ground, is unspoiled by perspective, supposition or denial and unstained by the darkness of unmindful delusion. That which is self-manifest is thus without fault when abiding in genuine intrinsic awareness. There is no fear even at the triple world's demise, nor is there attachment to the five sensory delights. In self-originating awareness free of concepts, there is neither solid form nor the five poisons. The unobstructed clarity of awareness is one in a sense and fivefold in wisdom. Throughout the ripening of the five wisdoms, the five original Buddha families arise. And through the wisdom's further expansion, the 42 peaceful Buddhas emerge. With the upsurge of fivefold wisdom's power, the 60 blood drinking herkas appear. Thus, ground awareness has never known delusion. I'm the primordial Buddha, and therefore, through this, my prayer of aspiration, may beings of Sansara's three realms recognize self-originating awareness, so that vast wisdom may be perfected. Continuously, my emanations will appear in their many billions beyond imagining, manifest in varied ways according to need. Through this, my compassionate inspiration, may all beings of Sansara's three realms escape their plight among the six classes. From the very first, since awareness does not dawn for deluded beings within the ground, they are entirely mindless and confused. This itself is unawareness, delusion's cause. And then, as if out of a sudden days, there is anxiety and mental disquiet from which notions of self and other and enmity appear. At this habitual tendency is then reinforced. Sansara unfolds in its regular progression. Thus, mind's afflictions, the five poisons develop, and actions born of these five poisons never end. Therefore, since the basis for being's delusion is a lack of mindless and absence of awareness, through this, my aspiration as a Buddha, may all beings recognize their own awareness. The unawareness that is co-emergent is a state of mindless distraction. The unawareness that designates is dualistic clinging to self and other. These two co-emergent and designating unawareness provide the basis for the delusion of all beings. Now through this, my aspiration as a Buddha, may the dark and murky gloom of mindfulness among all sentient beings in samsara be dispelled. May their dualistic perceptions be purified and may they, rec may they recognize their very own awareness. A mind of dualistic clinging is one of doubt. From subtle attachment, once it has arisen, habitual tendencies gradually gain strength. Food, wealth, clothing, home and companions, the pleasure of the five senses or dear relations, whatever is attractive, bring the torment of desire. These are the delusions of the world. Actions based on dualistic clinging are unending. When the fruits of attachment come to ripen, 
they bring birth as a preta tormented by desire. How wretched are the pains of hunger and thirst. Now through this, my aspiration as a Buddha, may beings be set by craving and attachment, neither cast aside to the torment of desire, nor pursue the craving of attachment. But by allowing the mind to relax just as it is, may they capture the natural state of awareness and gain the wisdom of perfect discernment. Through the subtle stirrings of anxiety and fear, Towards the appearance of external objects, habitual tendencies of aversion are reinforced, opening the way to enmity, injury, and slaughter. When the fruits of aggression come to ripen, how harrowing will be the boiling and burnings of hell. Now through this, my aspiration as a Buddha, may all sentient beings of the six realms, whenever they are beset by intense aggression, neither reject nor indulge it, but relax therein capture the natural state of their own awareness and gain the wisdom of lucid clarity. When the mind grows conceited, it brings thoughts of rivalry and disdain and the rising of intense pride, leading to the suffering of quarrels and disputes. When the fruits of such karma come to ripen, they bring birth as deva subject to passage and fall. Now through this, my aspiration as a Buddha, may all sentient beings in whom Conceit is born, relax their minds there and then, capture the natural state of their own awareness, and realize the true meaning of equality. Habitual tendencies of intense dualistic clinging bring about the pain of self flattery and contempt, and by inflaming conflict, dispute, and competition, lead to birth in the Asura realm of slaughter and mutilation which in turn results in descent to the domain of hell. Now through this, my aspiration as a Buddha, may those in whom rivalry and antagonism take root, not regard them as enemy, but relax there and then, capture the natural state of their own awareness and gain the wisdom of an unimpeded activity. Mindless indifference, distraction, dullness, drowsiness, oblivion, insensibility, laziness, and stupidity result in helpless animal wandering. Now, through this, my aspiration as a Buddha, may the light of clear cognitions arise in those plunged into stupidity's glow, and may they gain wisdom free of thought. All sentient beings throughout the three realms are equal to me, the Buddha, in the ground of all. Yet for them, it is but a base of mindless delusion. And now they engage in meaningless pursuits with sixfold karma as if deceived by a dream. Yet I am the primordial Buddha, guide to the six classes through my emanations, through this Samantabhadra's prayer of aspiration. May all sentient beings, without exception, awaken within the Dharma Dhatu, the absolute sphere. Aho. Henceforth, whenever a powerful yogi with natural clear, and deluded awareness recites this powerful aspiration, all sentient beings who hear it will awaken within the cause of three lives. When Rahu seizes the sun or moon, whenever the earth rumbles or quakes at the solstices or close of the year, visualize yourself as Samantabhadra and chant this aloud so all may hear. Then all beings of the three realms will, through the yogis' prayer of aspirations, gradually be free from their suffering and untimely awaken as a Buddha. So, I hope um, you enjoyed that. Some of my friends have been reaching out to me and asking, asking questions about why I'm following the Zen and the Vajrayana path. Uh, what are the differences and or similarities, questions such as that. And they become skeptical when I tell them that I don't find any difference at all, especially Vajrayana. And they say, but you know, there are female Buddhas and images of deities with consorts in unions and fierce looking wrathful deities. Don't you find it weird? Don't you get it? But they're saying, what about them? And I 
feel like telling them, no, I don't get them, you know. I don't get anything. I'm a Zen practitioner. <laughs> I try, try very hard not to get anything. I try very hard to put everything down. No color, no sound, no taste, no touch. <laughs> Especially questions about female, female Buddhas, you know. How can a female Buddha become a Buddha? Whether she became a Buddha after or before? Where is she? In which realm? Questions such as that. I understand them. Uh, and I'm so glad I found the Zen teachings before I met the, met the Vajrayana teachings. <laughs> I understand them because I too was initially uh, very, uh, very much like finding similarities and differences between, especially between Vipassana and Zazen at one point. I remember sitting uh, in, in Zazen and thinking suddenly, no, this is Vipassana. This is so much, you know, uh, similarities, you know, this and that. And then at one point, no, no, no. It, this is, Zazen is different and Vipassana is different. And then at one point, some of the came in between, you know, and then it was like comparing the, the three, uh, some of the Vipassana and Zazen, trying to find the, uh, the differences and the similarities, you know, like a wide pendulum going this way and that way. <clears throat> And then uh, I'm also asked about the extensive rituals, you know, like making offerings, especially the water bowls. We do a lot of offerings. and um, But then uh, we do them all the time in our day-to-day -day life, right? The rituals, I mean, cooking, cleaning, eating. Aren't there rituals too? The ritual of cooking, the ritual of taking a dog for a walk, the ritual of speaking uh, to your uh, children or yelling at them, the ritual of driving, moment to moment rituals, and especially the long sutra recitations, the mantra recitations, one mantra after the other. And there's a lot of questions about the iconography, about uh, the, the Vajrayana traditions, the symbols and the uh, images. And then I so want to tell them, so glad they want to tell them, everything is so easy and meaningful in that sound because everything becomes one. Thank you.